Hello everyone, Pastor Andy, uh, yes I voted, um, wanting to uh, welcome you to our 10th episode of Who Do You Think I Am? The question Jesus asked his disciples and the one that we all um, should uh, spend our lives learning to answer. Uh, we may start in one place and continue to grow and I hope this uh, series of videos is helping you do that. I know that for some of you the information overload might be too much. Um, it is uh, similar, I think, to having a relationship with someone that continues to surprise you and uh, confront you and um, change you. A relationship with Jesus uh, should be a lifelong pursuit. Um, if we were to come to uh, one conclusion about Jesus as a child and maintain that the rest of the life, I don't think that would be very faithful or enriching, but I'm hoping this is helping you to broaden out your perspective on what the Bible has to say about Jesus, and I hope that it's um, going to allow you to answer this question uh, in a much more meaningful and rich way in your life, because that's the really important thing. Today we're going to talk about um, Jesus as an apocalyptic preacher, apocalyptic preacher. You may remember the, the great movie Apocalypse Now, kind of a strange art film about um, Vietnam and sort of... Um, a portrayal uh, of uh, kind of doom and gloom, uh, obviously, of, uh, of the ex person's experience in Vietnam. Um, apocalyptic literature is really popular now. That's literature that looks toward the end of times and some sort of big confrontation in the end of time between good and evil. In fact, a lot of, um, of our literature today, not just in um, science fiction, but overall seems to be influenced by this idea that there is a, a battle going on um, between good and evil, and uh, and that feeling, um, that kind of being caught, uh, is really prevalent now. But I want to say that's the kind of feeling that was um, occurring in the years before Jesus arrived on the scene, and it, it came out of a very specific uh, conundrum that the Jews were facing. They were the chosen people, but for most of their history, they felt like very much the rejected people. Um, one conclusion what they they came to was, we're rejected by God because we keep sinning. He gives us every opportunity to, to get into the um, escape Egypt, and then we complain about it, to get into the wilderness, and then we build a golden calf, to get into the promised land, and we worship other gods, to get our own king, and then our king doesn't be... Uh, um, worship God. So the prophetic answer to why do bad things keep happening to the chosen people was that they were sinners and the way back to grace, the way back to um, a positive experience uh, of life again in the covenant with God is to stop sinning and to repent and to um, trust God once again. It's a great answer, an answer that uh, we can readily relate to. But there was another answer also, and this answer I think came out of a unique experience of people who felt that they were particularly being persecuted because they were faithful. It was their faithfulness, not their unfaithfulness, but their faithfulness that was causing them to be persecuted. That is, that they were Jewish people and their enemies were against Jewish people. What's changed, right? People still in the Jewish family still often feel that very thing. Um, there's, there's certainly um, a sense that um, good people are suffering for no good reason. And so they had to come up with a, a conclusion. If they weren't the cause of it, what was the cause? And, and this is where they came up with answer number two, which is the apocalyptic answer. Okay, The apocalyptic answer is there's a war between bad and good, and we're caught right now in a world that represents the bad. God is the good. We're caught on the bad side of this war. But don't worry, in apocalyptic literature, in the midst of all these struggles and fights and, and everything going on that's painful and awful, God's going to win. And God's coming. And he's coming. The, the, the ways we see this in, is in the book of Daniel. And some of the books that are called the Apocrypha that take place in between the end of the Old Testament books and the beginning of the New Testament, yes, there are books that were written during that time. They just didn't make the cut for... Many reasons, but maybe we should look at them. They're often apocalyptic. They're often experiencing um, great persecution for being Jews and coming to the conclusion, you know what? God's going to intervene. God's going to intervene. God is coming. Daniel called it, a son of man will come and he will set things right. 
a son of man. We know that uh, term, don't we? It's a term that's going to be used by Jesus and then also ascribed to Jesus. Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Daniel talked about the son of man uh, as some type of figure coming at the apex of the conflict and then the victory begins. The victory begins. Um, what it what that means then is while we're waiting for that son of man, we have to face the facts that life is going to be rough. We're going to be persecuted. It's going to be tough. And we need to um, hold life loosely. In other words, in this apocalyptic time, there's no reason for us to amass wealth or to worry about our stature in amongst other people. Um, there's no, no time for entanglements. We need to travel light. We need to be ready at any moment for the um, battle to begin. So arm yourself and prepare yourself and wash. If any of this is sounding like some things Jesus said, hmm, there you go. This is before Jesus, but it set the tone. It set the tone for the very same um, lingering thoughts that would occur as Jesus enters the scene. Um, some things that they um, also thought of for the um, apocalyptic um, mindset um, was things that you would see would be that the, the least would become the most. That is, those caught um, at the bottom of this grinding, terrible, evil world are going to get lifted up and turned around. Remember, Mary says, the rich and the poor, the, they'll fall from their thrones. will be a reversal. Mary had apocalyptic quality uh, in her own uh, faith about Jesus' birth. Um, the last will become first in this apocalypse. God will turn everything around. Um, he'll turn the tables. Those who are seated at the head of the table will find themselves at the foot of the table, turning the tables. So what do you want to do in the apocalyptic experience when you're uh, hanging in there? Well, associate yourself with the least. Don't strive for power and greatness. Strive to be the servant of all. Strive to um, be um, blameless. Um, don't associate yourself with the power of the temple, but with the piety of your own soul. Um, the, the overall uh, law, the system of rules is falling apart. It will be over. It was only necessary until God comes again. But the new law will be a law that is one of love and mercy and justice. Again, do you hear any echoes of where Jesus is going to end up preaching. So this apocalyptic um, time uh, sets a stage for when John the Baptist comes onto the scene. The, uh, the group he's most closely associated with were really apocalyptic. The Essenes, they had left Jerusalem entirely and moved out to the wilderness to wait kind of for the arrival of the Messiah, who was a, a kind of apocalyptic figure, but more of a human figure than we normally think of, an actual leader, a, a battle warrior, a general, or this son of man, this son of man who would be more of a, um, surprisingly, the son of man is more like a divine figure, um, who would come and uh, lead uh, this uh, final apocalypse. They had left Jerusalem, because Jerusalem is going to be judged, and they wanted to be out in the uh, place of holiness of the uh, desert. John comes out, repent, he says, turn around, turn the tables, get on the right side of things, because the kingdom is coming. Is this apocalyptic type preaching? Yes. Can we see it in a lot of other ways? Repent of your own personal sins, um, try to follow Jesus more close or God more closely, yeah. But, but out of the mouth of John in the desert, screaming at the top of his voice, and then echoed by Jesus, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Is Jesus following in that apocalyptic direction? Is he convinced or wants to tell all of us the end is near? Now, we can debate that. Just last week we said if he had thought the end was upon us, would he have started the church? Would he have started the church for a short amount of time? Uh, would he have given so many um, directives that seem to indicate that um, Life would go on for some time, and you'd have to learn how to forgive each other and how to wash each other's feet. As always with these, we're, we're not going to say one definitive answer. Clearly, he did say those things, and clearly a church resulted. Interestingly enough, what kind of church in general? In general, an apocalyptic church. What do I mean by that? 
I mean that that church, too, was expecting Jesus back at any minute. We can see it in Paul's very writings. He's expecting Jesus back any minute. This battle is is um, going to be concluded and Jesus is going to return. Um, as that time of return took time um, and people went further away from the actual Jesus experience, they started to rethink what this apocalyptic um, uh, experience would be. And and so the church has begun to think of, of what we would call kind of an interim view, which is the final battle didn't finish, but the decisive uh, battle, the death battle over death by Jesus on the cross, has been won. But we, we're still waiting for his, what, second coming. That will be the final apocalypse. And Revelation talks about that second, second coming in apocalyptic language. Battle between good and evil. Battle between uh, good and evil. Good is going to win. Stay on the side of good. Matthew is especially interested in apocalyptic literature. And if you're very interested, I would just encourage you to look at what's called Matthew's Little Apocalypse. And that begins um, basically with his teaching on the Mount of Olives in chapter 24. And if you read, you're going to come up with some, some, some good ideas of what apocalypse looks like. There's, um, he begins by saying that there's going to be all sorts of, um, of distress. He points to the temple. The stones are going to come down. This is part of the battle. Um, I'm going to have people come in my name. Don't listen to them. That's part of the, the deception of the, of the evil age. Um, nations are going to go against nation. Um, but this is just the beginning, he says. It's going to be worse. You're going to get handed over and persecuted. They were. They did get. He was right. Um, you will have to struggle in this evil age. Um, but what Jesus says, in this evil time, the one who stands firm will be saved. The one who stands firm. So that's kind of what we're doing, isn't it? That uh, experience of, a, of persecution has occurred again and again. Stand firm. That feeling of living in an evil, unredeemable world comes again and again. Stand firm. Hang in there. Be on the right side of things. Associate with the poor. Love your enemies. Um, understand that the meek are going to inherit the earth. And, and be meek. Seek the right side of this battle. God is going to end up coming in victory. And God's going to end up, um, when Jesus comes again, bringing this all to a conclusion. What it looks like, John's uh, revelation, maybe. Maybe very much like that. Maybe that's symbolic the language for what we can't even imagine will happen. Um, what should we do until then? Jesus is very clear. Watch. Watch. Don't predict it. No one knows the hour or day, not even the Jesus himself, he said. But be ready for it. Associate with those who are on the right side of this, and you will be saved. Um, it's a very powerful image of Jesus. This is one where you can't imagine Jesus is doing much more than shouting <laughs> to get our attention. This is still the loving Jesus. I mean, who wouldn't warn you, right? If they didn't love you, they wouldn't warn you. He, he's the one who believes that the ethic of how we live um, is an ethic of love in this interim. He doesn't say stop loving people, but he also says let go of the things that don't matter. Seek again, we go back to the kingdom of of heaven, and I will uh, be back in that final victorious conclusion. Some of you may still be around when I do, and it's powerful, powerful thought. So um, I hope this apocalyptic Jesus, the, the end is near, holding the sign in the street corner kind of Jesus, is, is not one that you turn away from or one that you reject, but rather one that you listen to. Sometimes people grow cold. As Jesus said, um, beware of the increase of wickedness. The love of most will grow cold. Do not let yourself grow cold during this time, but be on fire and say, come Lord Jesus, I'm ready. Until then, I'm going to follow you.